Well, this is it. This is the start of going up Harrison Stickle. That was a good night last night in the hotel. <laughs> I hope I didn't make too much noise this morning. I was creeping about. The floorboards were squeaking. You know what it's like? I'm going to try to get up and out early. Every tiny little sound just seems exaggerated. I've got everything packed. And I just thought, oh, can I just take one more shower? Just one more shower before I go. Uh, so I just quickly jumped in. <coughs> uh, I know I'm not going to have a shower for a couple of days. And it's going to be hot, so I sport myself this morning. But sorry if I woke anybody up. I'm sure I didn't. So the time now is about half past four. Temperature is perfect at the moment. So I'm just hoping I can get to the top in a reasonable temperature. Right, so I've obviously got this little LED panel on to light me up. That means I can't see anything in front of me. Oh, hang on, there's a gate. Right, so, I think this is the start. I'm gonna get my trekking poles out and I'll see you guys a little bit further up. You live and you learn And I hope I've seen enough To make something right And make up for what I Thank you, Slovakia. Much appreciated. Love to you as well. Oh. Let me sit down. Let me rest. Let me rest. Let me rest my old bones. Well, that was tough. It really was tough, but it was not as bad as I was expecting. Especially because the whole way up I hiked in shadow and I've now made it to Stickle Town. And I'm talking relatively quiet because there's a few tents scattered around people that have wild camped up here last night and to be honest with you, I don't blame them. This is a great place to pitch up tent for the night. I won't talk about it just now, but when I get a bit further on, I'll explain where I was going to set up camp before I chose the uh, the new Dungeon Gill Hotel. But the pathway coming up, I don't know. I don't know what my my starting elevation was and what my elevation is now, um, and the distance I walked to kind of give me some sort of ratio of the incline. But I stopped her a few times just to admire the view and uh, take a, a few photos. I didn't really stop for anything else. The rucksack has not been off since I left the hotel. And I don't know if I've said it already, but it's taken me probably just over an hour to get from A to B. So now I am going to starve. I'm gonna have some, some water. I'm gonna sit here and just admire like, the Alpine view. Uh, the alpine glow, I should say, that's just hitting some of the, the peaks. Uh, as nice as that is to see that, that glow, <laughs> I don't want to see it. Because that means the sun is kind of getting higher. And it is so nice at the moment. Just having this cool breeze and this really sensible temperature. Right, once I've stopped here for a little while, we will then make our way around Stickle Tarn and onto the first Wainwright of the day.
Well, I've not attached the mic to the phone. So perhaps you can just hear some wind noise. And that is so welcoming, it really is. Um, in fact, I almost feel like a little bit chilly now I've stopped uh, and that wind is coming through, but it's a nice feeling. <laughs> so you can see Stickle Time behind me. Now I can't see um, the screen on the camera. So, but basically I'm gonna be walking up this path and then I'll start to snake round end up up there I believe I do if I've got that wrong I'll put that at the bottom of the screen but I think that is my first Wainwright today Pavey Arc oh no the sun has just hit me <laughs> for the first time oh man I feel like a troll or a vampire that doesn't like the daylight. Now this bit, it's a bit of a, a bit of a scramble, and uh, I've got to be a little bit careful, but just because of the the weight that I'm carrying on my back, I've got to make sure that every step I've got a a good footing especially when I have to kind of raise my knee to about or my foot to about knee height and then you have to really kind of heave yourself up I just don't want to slip while I'm doing that because this pack will just drag me back down Whew. I haven't got a clue how far I've got to go oh, perhaps this isn't a good idea filming yeah I'm not gonna, what was I just thinking no. right okay let me get around the corner out the sun and back into the shade some sort of fat goth <laughs> man that sun you can probably see is right behind me now and that is that is energy zapping i mean i know it's steep anyway but there is not a drop of wind where i am and uh, i've just pulled a little bit of a muscle in my right calf when I said earlier that when you have to lift yourself up you have to get your foot up to about knee height and then whoop, kind of heave yourself off I did that and I just kind of felt a little twinge in my right calf hopefully it will loosen up and I'll just walk it off soon but it does feel very tight oh well hopefully I haven't got too far to go uh, before I can stop, have a sandwich and uh, have a swig of water. I don't know how much this camera's picking this up, but the contrast on that fell looks fantastic. I did try to get the camera out, but it wasn't really having it. So I'm not going to fret. I'm just going to get to the top and see what I can see from up there. Right, come on in, Dazza. Stop making excuses to waffle. Let's get going. Let's get going. Let's get ready to rumble. Put the camera away, Darren. Oh, hello. Well, I'm here and I finally made it. And if truth be known, I'm a bit underwhelmed. This, <laughs> this is Pavey Arc. And um, I was expecting ticker tape and cheerleaders to be welcoming me me here but it's not even a can I hope I'm in the right place my <laughs> OS maps says I'm in the right place but uh oh, I'm sure I am that's fine anyway regardless I'm joking of course regardless of uh can or no can the views down here are oh, fantastic absolutely beautiful from up here um so oh where am i going next i'm heading in that direction oh crikey the name has just totally escaped me you probably can't see it but there is a um there's a red tent already camped up there so i will go and join them in a little while say good morning to them and then i'll be going to harrison stickle and then i'll be making my way to piker stickle and then I'll be going down the valley. 
but now I'm up here, it's tea time, sandwich time, and just admire these views. Well, I couldn't film too much when I was at the last Wainwright because there was people up there and always feel a bit awkward talking to a, a camera when there's other people around, but I'm on my own at the moment, so I feel absolutely fine. But this is it. This is the one that I've been waiting for. <sighs> Harrison Stickle, right there, that bad boy. And um, I've mentioned at some point on this video, I know that this place holds a real special place in my heart, yet I've never been there. So uh, I can't wait to get to the top and providing there's nobody at the top when I get there, I'll explain why. If not, I will explain on the way down when I find the right opportunity. But I can't wait to get to the top. After 31 years, I've been waiting to get to the top here. And today, it's gonna to be the day. <laughs> Do you know what? I feel quite emotional now I'm up here. I really do. Um, I've um, I've been married for thirty one years to an amazing person. I love her to bits. And um, when we got married all of those years ago, we was obviously gifted some very generous wedding presents. And every single present that we was given, um, we no longer have just because they've either worn out or they've broke or, you know, after 31 years, um, you know what happens. But there's one present that we have left um, and that is a, a photo of Harrison Stickle. And um, I look at this photo every day. Every day I look at it and I keep thinking, one day I will get to the top of Harrison Stickle. Um, and rather than looking up at it from this photo, I will look down from where the photo was taken. And my wedding anniversary was about six days ago. So almost 31 years to the day, I'm now on top of Harrison Stickle in this amazing weather, looking down the valley down below. And there's only one thing that's missing, and that's Els. She's not with me today, but we're gonna come back here in the summer and we are definitely going to be doing this together, most definitely. I can't believe, after so long, I'm actually here on a day like today. <sighs> Incredible. Right, okay. Come on, you soft bugger. Let's move on. No, sod it. Let's not move on at all. Let's take this pack off. Let's stay up here and have a cup of tea and enjoy the views. Right, so leaving Harrison Stickle, I've got a quite a bit of elevation to come down, unfortunately, and then I'll be going back up to Loft Crag, and then hopefully I'll be able to walk across some of the tops um, until I get to that one there, which is the Piker Stickle. And then that's my Wainwright hopping over. And then from there, I can actually start my walk. Because <laughs> after I've finished here, um, I think I've still got about another nine miles to go. Oh, can you believe I've done all this and I've not even started the walk yet? Right, come on Dazza, push on. Stop playing around with the camera. You've got to know, haven't you? The views are just so good. You want to, I want to document as much as possible and photograph as much as possible, but I know I've got to move on, otherwise I'll be 
walking all day. Right, okay, come on. I'll see you at the top. Well, when I was standing at the top of Harrison Stickle, uh, and I was looking out to my next two Wainwrights, um, I mean, I knew that I'd have to come down quite a way to obviously go back up, but I must admit now I'm actually in the valley ready to start my ascent again. You, you kind of really do appreciate that it is a, a whole new individual peak that I have to hike, not just a, a continuation uh, across the ridge line. And now I'm standing where I'm standing, you know, as I say, it does look incredibly imposing again. Um, and the pike of stickle, I think, is, is possibly even higher. And I, I'm, I've just got a decision to make, really, because, you know, I've not even started my walk today yet. I mean, this was meant to be, like, you know, the, the early morning section and then get on, which, you know, I kind of knew. I, in the back of my mind, I knew all of this, but visualising it, you know, on the, on the PC and physically doing it is two different things. And, and so I've got two options. Well, probably three options. I, I do these two. Um... And, and then just keep going and then just see as far as I can get or I miss out these two and then just head on to Cat Bells which is my last destination today uh, or I'll do these two and get to Cat Bells <laughs> I don't know, I don't know now I've got to do it and I? I've got to do it, the weather is glorious at the moment um, no, I've got to do it and if I don't get to Cat Bells well, then I just don't get to Cat Bells right I'll see you at the top of Loft Crag. Well, that was a bit tough, <laughs> but I made it. Loft Crag. Oh, oh my goodness. Loft Crag. And you know what? I'm so pleased I did it. And there is my first fell walker that I've seen today. Not that you guys can probably see him. He's just on the summit of Harrison Stickle. Oh, man, the views. Oh, I can't, you can't describe it, can you? You can't put it into words. You can see for yourself. It doesn't need any words. It's just incredible. This is definitely God's country. Definitely God's country. Right, okay. Mr. Stickle boy. Let's try and get up there now. And then after that, it should be all downhill. Should be all downhill. <laughs> Until cat bells. Then it's a, don't worry about cat bells. Just, just get up there first. Later potatoes. Man, that looks steep, doesn't it? <laughs> when I was walking up from this direction and I was just looking at it and I was just thinking, well, I can see a cairn up there, but how the hell do you get up there? And when I've just got to here, you can see a, a pathway, but even so, crikey. Well, I just met up with one of the wild campers. Oh, what kind of spider is that? That looks like, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on a minute. Let it be. Let it be. Well, I just met up with one of the wild campers that I saw earlier. And uh, she came up here oh, a lot faster than me, that's for sure. But she's probably got about 30 years on me. And she's now off to Bowfell. So we both wished each other well with the rest of, the, of our days. And, uh, and this is it. This is... This is the last one for a while. Pike of Stickle. I feel truly blessed today to be standing here with these views, with the weather like today. Because, you know, so many times you can plan to come to the lakes like I have done on numerous occasions. And you come up to the top of something like this and you can't see anything. You know, you can't see the visibility is like 50 metres or something. But... Yeah, that's why I knew that I, I had to do this today. 
had to do it. The views are just too good. The weather is just too good to miss. Right, come on then, Dazza. Let's do it. Let's get down and let's get back on the Cumbria Way. Well, I'm back on the Cumbria Way now. And if I hadn't have done my own kind of personal quest this morning to go up some of the central fells and tick off a, a few Wainwrights, I could have quite easily just left the hotel and walk the Cumbria way and then go up Snake Stake Pass, which I've heard is quite a, a steep incline. I've never done it, but I don't think it was any more strenuous than what I've kind of already done this morning. But when I came down, so I come down the route with the Pike of Blisco and I joined the Cumbria way at the intersection at the top of Stake Pass. Um, so as soon as I got back on the, the on the Cumbria way, I thought, right, well, I'll, I'll wait to a point where I can stop somewhere where I can uh, get some shade uh, and a great view. Uh, well, obviously, I've got the view, but I don't have the shade. And I'm starting to cook a little bit at the moment. But that's fine. Look at that view. That view is worth it all day long, isn't it? So I just had a, a few snacks, nothing, nothing major, and some water. And uh, I, need to, I need to kind of push on a little bit. Another 10 minutes won't hurt, but... To be honest with you, I've actually been out now for six hours already. Six hours up and down the, the fells. Um, and normally on a day like today, I would be done now. That would be me. I would be kind of heading down and, you know, but now I think my hike only just begins. So never mind. Anyway, I'm looking forward to walking down in the valley down there. And so the next time you see me, I will be further down in the Valley of the Kings or Queens or by, 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 by gender, by, not by gender, is it? What's that? What is it? By, by gender, gender, new, is it gender neutral? Gender Whoa. I'm actually off of that pathway. Um, man, that was that was really steep. And in order to make the path safe, I had to do a series of kind of hairpin bends. And the stone underfoot is uh, is really loose. And a few times I lost my foot in where my, my heels just kind of went from underneath me. Right, sorry, it's very windy now. The wind's just picked up, so I'm guessing that the audio on this is showcane. So, adieu to you and you and you. Oh. Oh, man. This is freezing, but beautiful freezing. In fact, this is probably the best little wild dip I've had because the others were quite weedy. Look at this, this is only about three and a half foot on stones. Oh, this is it. This is perfect. See you later. Fifty-three, Dazza. You're fifty-three. I bet they feel good without their big woolen coats on. Just been sheared. Well, this walk, stroke, hike, the Langstrath Valley. Man, I can't recommend this highly enough. This is superb, it really is. And I know that I'm spoilt today with glorious weather, but I would think that even if the weather in the lakes was really poor, which means you couldn't get up to some of the, the higher peaks, the higher fells, and you think, oh, I just want to go for a walk. This is the place on a bad day as well. <laughs> Same in winter. I do think that this uh, this valley would probably suit 
didn't even have any condition. This is definitely one of my favorite legs that I've done so far. And it's not over yet. These huge high fells either side of me. And the little sheep, the little sheepettes. And this nice fence, keeping it all authentic. Stone wall coming up. Oh mate, what more could you ask for, eh? Other than a nice cold beer. <laughs> That's what it needs. A couple of beer shops, a couple of uh, little pop-up stalls along the way. You know, like for runners, when they're just handing out like water or Lucas aid. That's what this needs, a little pop-up stall with beer on it. Well done, Dazza. Well, here comes Dazza. Come on, a beer. And I'll just take it out of their hands as I walk by. Like that. Cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. See you 50 yards up for another one. Cheers. I don't know if this is a good idea to stop at a pub and have a beer. Let alone two beers. But as I was walking by, I think I'm in Rossway at the moment. And as I was walking through the little village, there was like, I think, like a van driver. He was certainly in a van anyway. I don't know if he was just unloading something, but he just said to me, Oh, it's just touched 29 degrees. And I thought, Oh, mate, that's my cue. That's my cue to go straight into the pub and get a couple of cold beers. I don't know if it'll help or hinder me for the next part of this, this walk, but the time now is, I mean, it's almost like two o'clock. Crikey, what's that, about 10 hours I've been walking for already. So I'll have a few beers here, cool off a little bit under the shade. Do you know what? My legs are not hurting at all. I feel absolutely fine, like, fine, like strength-wise, I feel, I feel all right. The only thing that's hurting is my shoulders. And I've found that once I kind of get to about, I don't know, like five or six miles into uh, any hike, I feel that I have to just keep stopping, undoing the waist belt, lifting it up, reattaching it, tightening it up again, just to get the weight off of my shoulders. That's the only thing on me that's hurting, just my shoulders. And after a while, it just gets like really uncomfortable. So, if I can try and find, I don't know, if they, a bit of extra padding might help. I mean, the thing is, I'm just wearing a t-shirt where normally I've got like a few layers on, especially like a, perhaps a, a down coat as well, which might just help soften the blow. But yeah, at the moment, the only thing that I'm really uncomfortable with is my shoulders. If it wasn't for them, I just felt that I could keep going for hours. Mind you, <laughs> I've got to keep going for hours with or without the bowed shoulders, unless I just camp here for the night. Me and you, bud, what do you reckon? Man, honestly, the pain I'm in with my shoulders, oh, this is incredible. I keep lifting up my rucksack, oh, but the pain just won't go. Do you know what, I'm gonna say it. I don't even care anymore. I reckon this is worse than childbirth. And Els, if you're watching this, don't you be giving me no raised eyebrows. I know you had three kids, my darling, but let's face it, you had epidurals, gas and air. Basically, you were smacked off your tits for six hours. All I've had is two pints of Budweiser. Oh. Oh, now I've got a kissing gate, just to top off, just to top off the uh, the pain and the angst. Still got the masterclass. <laughs> Get in, Dazza. Ah. Right, let me explain. Firstly, this is medicinal because I've got a bad shoulder. Secondly. I'm just about to start the hike up to Cat Bells, but it's too early. Man, I've been walking for 11 and a half hours. Right, so the time now is four o'clock in the afternoon. I don't want to get up there too early because there will be no shade up there at the moment. And I think I'm just going to swelter. So that's number two. Number three, this is the Borrow Gates 
Hotel, Borrowdale Gates Hotel. And I've actually stayed here. I stayed here about, oh, it's about two years ago now. And I had no idea until I kind of walked into the car park. And I thought, I don't know, this looks familiar. And I got inside the reception. And yeah, and so I can highly recommend this hotel. Lovely hotel this is, beautiful setting. And number four, it's just beer o'clock, isn't it, really? So yeah, so I'm gonna stay here for one beer. That's all I'm gonna have. And I'm gonna have a cheeky little vapette. And then I'm gonna rest my aching limbs and then I'm gonna hike cat bells and try and find a, a spot for tonight. So what I'm thinking is I'm, so there's me, the summit, and then there's Keswick. So I'm assuming that people that are gonna hike Keswick this evening are coming, hike cat bells this evening, are gonna come from Keswick. So I'm thinking, I don't really wanna camp anywhere near the summit, because there could be a lot of people still coming up. So I'm thinking about camping this side of the summit and then perhaps kind of touching the, the cairn tomorrow morning on the way down. That's the plan anyway, unless, They've got a spare room for tonight. <laughs> then who knows? Oh, and let me tell you, so you don't think I'm cheating. Tomorrow, I'm really hoping I can get the launch from Derwent Water across to Keswick. Um, I, I know that, you know, there's the, 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 Connors, the, the Connors, that Cumbria Way walks around um, Derwent Water. But just a part of my little adventure, I'd love to get the launch straight across. I think that'd be like so cool to add to this uh, this trip, but it's all gonna depend on timing. I don't know what time I'm gonna leave in the morning and uh, what time they start running. But if they do run at the time that's convenient for me, oh, I can't wait to get that little on that little boat, have a little trip across the water. Anyway, cheers. <laughs> it's not, it's Carlsberg. Do you know what? Seriously, I'm starting to think I've made a bit of a mistake here. And that's the truth. When I'm standing here and I'm not even at the summit of Cat Bells and I look at the northern fells that I've got to do tomorrow and the hike from the summit of Cat Bells is as far, or if not further, than what I've done today. I'm thinking, man, I don't know if I can do this. Seriously, that just looks like a bridge too far. So far, I've been stopping, I don't know, about every 30 meters in elevation. If this was a, a day hike from the from the hotel that I had a beer in, no problem. If this was a day hike with a day pack on, no problem. But after, I don't know man, 12, 13, 14 miles with a fully loaded pack, whew, this has been tough, really tough. So let me show you my views. So that's what I'm, I've got behind me, just with the, see the sun there, big old glare. There you go, sun just setting there behind that mountain range over there. Look, there's some nice kind of contrast on those fells. And just over here, you can see some kind of farmland. Um, and that's what I was kind of picking out with the, with the camera. And earlier kind of in there's a little kind of gully down there. I was just kind of playing around with a, a few shots there because there is a, a mountain stream that was coming down and I thought, oh, you know, you never know, it could be perhaps a black and white image and then just pick out that mountain stream a little bit, you know. And then on this side, there's Derwent Water, just there, looking very nice indeed. Over there is uh, the Northern Fells, but that's not the Northern Fells that I'm gonna be hiking up tomorrow. The Northern Fells that I'm hiking up are behind 
uh, cat and bells just here. And if you see, there we go. There is cat bells. Just a, a short hop and skip away. I'm not too sure what that ridge is there behind me. This one here. Perhaps I can put it up at the bottom of the screen now. Um, but there's a see that path that obviously snakes round to the top and there was a guy that came round earlier and he said oh, I really want to get down to do it more do I need to go up that path and when I said no you you can veer off just before it and come drop down he was he was very relieved so uh he said oh, I'm gonna go for a dip I thought mate I don't blame you I don't blame you at all I've had enough of them on this trip that's for sure especially that one today that was my favorite wild dip ever it was just just the right temperature. I felt like a, a kid, you know, a kid in the swimming pool when they don't want to get out and you have to get dragged out. That's how I felt. And when I got out, oh, I just felt clean. I just felt refreshed. My body temperature went down. Oh man, it does you the world of good. Right, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do for something to eat tonight. I'm not overly hungry, if I'm honest with you. Oh, oh, didn't do this very well, am I? Let's, is that any, oh, oh, it's all gone Pete Tong. There we go. Just got a bit of washing line going on over on this side, on these guy ropes here. Cut a pair of socks hanging on there. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do for something to eat tonight. Perhaps I might do anything. I'm not overly hungry, to be honest with you. So, so I'm just on the coffee. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And then just wait for sunset. See what happens. But I don't think there'll be a great deal of photography. Not with the kind of blue skies. It's not really... They don't make great photos, do they? When you've just got kind of blue skies. No kind of drama in the sky it's very difficult i find it very difficult to pick out a, a good image when the skies are like this so i think i might just wait till sunset and then have an early have a early evening and uh just see what tomorrow brings anyway coffee time that'll keep me up won't it that was a sensible idea having a coffee this time of night oh. anyway I have no idea how to edit this video yet, so I may see you in the next three or four seconds. If not, I'll see you on the next video. But if it is the next video, as always, be kind and stay safe. And drink beer.